Right, so in this video, we're going to look at epithelial tissue. This is slide 7 through 16 on our, um, our PowerPoints. So let's start looking at this. So epithelial tissue, like I said, epi is a big part of this. Epithelial tissue is going to be tissue that's going to, it says, covers organs and body surfaces, lines, cavities, and hollow organs. So if I have the stomach and I have a little cross section of the stomach here, whatever tissue that is going to be on the inside lining, that's going to be epithelial tissue. So even uh, on our skin, the outer part of our skin is epithelial tissue. So epithelial tissue is always going to have a free surface. Uh, it's going to make up glands, and we'll look at glands a little later on. <coughs> Now with this, I'm going to stick mainly with what we talked about in lab as well. Um, so again, it's always going to have a free surface, and on the opposite side of the free surface, I'm going to erase this right now, but the opposite side of the free surface is going to be the basement membrane. So I'm going to have a free surface up here, and then I'm going to have a basement membrane here. And the, uh, the tissue below the basement membrane, up being generally connective tissue or whatever. Now, one of the keys to really understand this is epithelial tissue is avascular. So I'm going to have a blood supply that's going to get right up to the basement membrane and then turn around. It never crosses the basement membrane. It's going to come up here, drop off the yummy oxygen, and pick up the, the, the waste product that is carbon dioxide and, and move on but it never crosses the basement membrane, so it is avascular. If you put an A in front of a Greek term, that means without whatever the Greek term is. So avascular means without vascularity, without blood supply. Now, you might think that that means that it won't heal well, because in the connective tissue, we will see that the ability for that tissue to heal is directly related to uh, how good a blood supply it has. Uh, but this is this is different. This uh, not only heals very rapidly because these cells go through um, division really quick, mitosis really quick. It is designed that way because if I looked at this, I want to change the color here. If this is the free surface we're saying right here, and we're in something like the mouth, every time I chew. Uh, I'm going to have things that move along the side of it, and it's going to damage the tissue. If it has a free surface, that means things are always going to be rubbing against it. And in general, that means that it's going to have to suffer a lot of damage. This is exactly why the, the blood vessels don't cross the basement membrane, because this part type of tissue is always going to be getting kind of abused. Uh, if in... Uh, the 2, uh, 112 lab, or if you've ever taken a science lab where they'll take a, a little toothpick and just rub it against your cheek and make a little cheek slide of the, the tissues, you don't have to take that toothpick and gouge yourself with it. It, um, it is a pretty uh, easy thing to just rub it across it and you'll get tissues on it, uh, uh, cells on it. And it's because that type of tissue is designed to take a beating. So the very reason that it doesn't have blood supply because, again, we don't want to get the blood too close to the surface because if it, any scrape or scratch would just cause me to continue to bleed. But with that same aspect of it, I also want to have it repair very readily. Um, so that's the way that works. Now, the cells in this um, are tightly packed together, which is going to be different than most of the connective tissue we will look at. And there is a book-wise way to name these. And the book way to name it is very easy. So again, I'm going to kind of try to erase some of this stuff right here so I don't distract anybody with anything. And then uh, we'll look at the, the way the book would name it. So if I've got the free surface and the basement membrane, and I know where they are, um, all I have to do is count the number of cells so if I'm looking at it and this is a cell, I can only, I see that there's only one cell between the free surface and the basement membrane. It is classified as simple, all right? If, on the other hand, I can tell that there's more than one, again, sorry for my drawing here, 
but there's more than one. It doesn't have to be a thousand. All it has to be is more than one. If it's more than one, it is referred to as stratified. Now, there is a type that um, is going to be falsely layered. It's called pseudostratified, and we have one called pseudostratified columnar epithelium. And pseudo means false. And so when things were, when we had more basic microscopes and the scientists were looking at it, it looked like it was layered, but it wasn't truly layered. And so once the microscopes got better, uh, we saw that since it was layered and falsely layered, they changed the name to pseudostratified. You'll see that. There's another one that we're going to look at that just has one name. It's called transitional because it doesn't have a normal shape. It is stratified, but there's no normal shape to it. Because you see, these two words, simple or stratified, are the basic words that start the name of these tissues. And again, pseudostratified's in there. The next word describes what the cell looks like, the shape of the cell. Squamous means flat. Cuboidal means cube-like. Understand it doesn't mean it's a cube. It just simply means it's roughly as wide as it is tall. And then columnar, which means it's very tall. Now, uh, for instance, if I have one cell layer thick, simple, of flattened cells, the name of that tissue is generally simple squamous. If I have more than one layer of flattened cells, it is stratified squamous. One cell layer thick of cube-like cells is simple cuboidal. Multiple cell layers thick of cube-like cells is going to be stratified cuboidal, and vice versa. All right, so we can we can continue on there, but I think you get I'm hoping you get the picture. So we're going to look at a couple of of slides and a couple of tissues, and again, it's not going to be. Uh, I'm going to have some pictures from lab. There are a few on here that we talk about that we don't go over in lab, but don't stress about that. Um, but I'm just going to give you the basics of it. So simple squamous epithelium. Simple squamous epithelium, like I said, is one cell layer thick of flattened cells. And understand when we talk about that, um, this is going to be incredibly thin. So this is going to be areas where we want to have the thinnest possible dividing line between two things. So the main place that we see these, and we see it in, very, in a lot of places, but the, the classic place is the air sacs of the lungs. We call them ovuli. That is the tissue slide that we have in lab. And again, we want it super thin because we need it thin enough to divide the air from the blood, but not too thick that the, that the respiratory ga gases and the blood gases can't transfer back and forth. So we want the thinnest possible way um, to divide it. Um, simple cuboidal, again, now this is pretty thin, but it's, a, it's thicker than the squamous. And so there are some, it, it's going to have a little bit of protection. It's not necessarily designed for protection, but it's going to be a little bit of protection. So uh, you'll see that this is going to be pretty often in kidney or in um, um, uh, glands and stuff. But the way we see it, the, the place we look at it in lab are the kidney tubules. So this is our picture from lab. You know, this is simple squamous. This is going to be simple uh, cuboidal. Um, these are the ones that the these are the pictures the book uses. I wouldn't worry too much about those right now. Again, don't get don't get distracted. Um, these over here are lab pictures, or the ones that I'll be using. These are the type. These represent the slides we have in lab at the Grand Strand campus. So. Those are the ones, if you're in my class, those are the ones to kind of look at and, and go through. Now, again, I have my lab video that goes over uh, week two, the histology lab, that will go into these a little more. So in this, I'm just pointing a few things out. Simple columnar and pseudostratified columnar. Uh, you know, I always try to make a point of the fact that, so simple columnar, first and foremost, simple columnar and pseudostratified columnar. Simple columnar in our uh, in our um, lab, we look at a tissue slide, and we said that the the classic example is the digestive tract, and it's basically the small intestines is the, the slide that we have, and the pseudostratified we look at as lining the respiratory passageways. Now, I always try to make a point that these two have a common origin of a um, in our head. 
using my mouse pad here to draw, so bear with me. In our head, in behind the nose and mouth, we have a common pathway called the pharynx. Once it gets down to the area that you'll learn in the respiratory system is the larynx, it divides. I'm going to have part that goes down to my lungs, and I'm going to have part that goes down to my intestinal tract, to my stomach, we'll just say. And so uh, they're kind of cousins, so they're both columnar. Both of them are columnar because, again, cousins can, can look very similar but also be very different. So they're both columnar. And so simple columnar, like I said, lines the, uh, the digestive tract. Um, in our pictures, in our slides on the Grand Strand campus, again, uh, they have a distinct color of red and blue. We'll see that in just a minute. But this is the first area where we see goblet cells, which secrete mucus. Um, the cousin, again, also has co co uh, goblet cells, which secretes mucus as well. Now, what we'll look at, and I'm going to talk about this microvilli, which we didn't cover in lab. I'm going to talk about this microvilli um, when we see the picture here of our tissue in just a minute, but don't stress about that. The pseudostratified, again, this is the one that fooled people. Pseudo means false, so it looks like it's layered, but it's not. Um, and so this, again, is going to have, uh, this is going to have a, a little band, but it's going to have... Um, goblet cells, just like the uh, simple columnar, and it's going to have cilia. Now, this might or might not have cilia up here, the simple columnar, but the pseudostratified does. So, uh, at least the ones we're going to look at and what I want you to know. So, when we look at the pictures, this, again, this is going to be our uh, picture for um, the simple columnar, blue and red fingers. Now, these little extensions here, probably have changed them. So if I circle this one thing here or this right here, these are called villi. Villi just simply are these finger-like extensions that go into the, the cavity that is, for instance, the small intestines. If I was able to magnify and look at the surface of the cells on this, you would see that even on the cells, I have little finger-like extensions. It ends up looking like Bart Simpson's head. And again, you'll see that in um, you'll see that in the digestive system when you study it. And so we've got villi, which are these big finger-like things that stick out. And then on the surface of each cell, I've got microvilli, which are little fingers that stick out, which again are all about increasing surface area, which increases absorption. And so this will also have the little embedded goblet cells that are secreting mucus. And while that sounds kind of gross, understand that it is vitally important. Now on this one down here, again, doesn't look the same, but this is the pseudostratified. And if we were to magnify this and look at this, you would see that the nuclei are all over the place, but it's still only one layer. Um, and on the surface, there is a hair-like extension on and it would be the equivalent of, and you can kind of see it better on this picture, uh, it would be the equivalent of having a cell with AstroTurf on the top of it, and the cell could control each one of those blades of grass. So that is uh, simple columnar and pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Then we got to the stratified. So stratified squamous was the first one, and in lab, uh, we only looked at two, stratified squamous and transitional. In here, there's going to be two extra ones that I'm not worried about you knowing, except for to understand the way the name works. In your mind, I hope that when you read the name, you will be able to picture it. Right? So stratified squamous, we said, for us, is going to be the outer layer of the skin. That's what we called it right now. Uh, now, um, in lab, we've gone past this and gone into the integumentary system, so you know specifically it's the epidermis. But, you know, right now, as we're just talking, I'm going to talk about it here. Now, what we looked at is keratinized. There is a portion that is uncharactinized. It's going to be in the entryways into the body, and it's going to have, um, it's going to have a moist membrane on it. But we're just worried about the keratinized. So simple star stratified squamous means multiple cell, layer, multiple cell layers thick of flattened cells. Then we look at our first one that we don't look at in lab, and it is stratified cuboidal. A 
again, the only thing I want you to know about this, and I'm hoping I'll be able to draw it well on this, um, is that it is multiple layers of cube-like cells. And that's it. Right, so if I draw it here and here, all right, so oh boy, those look flat. But you get the picture. They're multiple layers of cube-like cells. Um, some glands, like salivary glands, are going to have this. But again, not anything I'm really all that interested in as far as you know, and except for the name, just like the next one that we'll look at called stratified columnar. But let's look at the pictures. So uh, the only one we have a picture of, the only slide that we have is the stratified squamous, which we said was the skin. It's got that wavy basement membrane. Now you know this is where the dermal papilla are going to be located as well as the Meisner corpuscles. And that we had this part here that looks a little bit like smoke on the water and or haze on the water. And we said that is dead skin cells as we are as these cells get pushed up, they die and turn into little flat things that are protecting us. And again, this is super important and it is a very efficient way of protection. And unfortunately, we take it for granted. But if anybody knows anyone, hopefully uh, none of y'all have had major third degree burns over any large part of your body. But if you have a third degree burn over any large part of your body, you have to live in a sanitary environment, a little tent that is completely sanitary. And it is because all day long, 24-7, you've got bad things trying to get in here. But this little idea of these cells sloughing off allows you to protect yourself from all kinds of things. Again, you are under attack 24-7. Now, we don't have a picture of, for us, of stratified cuboidal because it's not something we cover in lab. But again, I want you to know that there is a tissue called stratified cuboidal. Stratified cuboidal means multiple cell, cell layers thick of cube-like cells. Just like our next one, which is stratified columnar, another one that we don't look at in lab. All it is is several layers thick of column-like cells. Not really all that concerned about it, not worried about where it's found, but this is you know, a tissue that we do have. We just don't cover it in lab. Uh, the main one that I want you to know with this is transitional. Transitional, again, this is going to line the urinary bladder. And remember, if it is ever something you have to fill in the blank, that it is the urinary bladder, all right? It is the urinary bladder. It's not just the bladder. There are other bladders in the body, like the gallbladder. Um, and transitional is called this because it changes shape. It is going to be flat when the urinary bladder is full and it's going to be expanded out or ballooned out when the urinary bladder is empty. All right, so this here is the picture of the stratified columnar. Again, we don't have a tissue slide for it and this is the tissue slide that we have in lab for the transitional. Uh, this little area here is just like little little airbags and they're going to change shape and so they're never really flat they're never columnar they're never cuboidal they're just kind of whatever it takes it's never a standard so we call it transitional and um, with that we have a little graph that kind of goes over these gives an idea um, but I want you to know for me um, it's the same information that we were looking at in lab the only difference is because these two here if I can find my pointer, these two here, these two we don't have pictures for in lab. The only thing I want you to know, you don't have to know locations for these, uh, these two. Um, the only thing I want you to know is the name and the description. So if I have something that says, what is the description, uh, what is the name of a multiple layer, a tissue that's multiple layers of column-like cells, you should be able to tell me it's stratified columnar. All right, I hope that makes sense.